Okay guys, so today I thought I'd be doing something, or thought of doing something a little bit fun, a little bit different from what I normally do. And today I'm going to be re-hanging this little double bit axe that I've had for a while. Anyone that's been around for a very long time on the channel will know this little guy. This is a True Temper Vulcan <clears throat> axe I got years ago. I had it hung, didn't like the way that turned out, so I actually just took it off and just put it in the closet and let it sit there for another few years. <coughs> but today I'm going to be bringing this guy back and just overall bringing it back and rehanging it, hopefully. So <clears throat> this is the axe head and it is actually pretty well restored. And of course, once again, like I said, when I originally got this thing, I restored it and sharpened her up and everything was peachy with the overall axe head so there's not a whole lot to talk about with this little double bladed axe head but that is the axe head and lastly or nextly <clears throat> is the handle and this is just a factory store bought handle and I'm going to be playing around with this and <clears throat> I have another axe I'm going to be restoring I'm probably going to make its handle so you guys can get kind of a tale of two different uh, trials so yeah this is just going to be a general pretty easy store bought handle hang but I wanted to try it out and <clears throat> the particular store I got it from finally had a 28 inch handle in and I wanted to get a 28 inch handle because this is a smaller axe head or double bit it may not look particularly small but for double bits it is so anyways guys that's the basics to this and now let's jump into it <laughs> So slight change of plans here because this handle ended up being, or the head ended up being just a little bit bigger than the handle. So today I'm gonna be teaching you yet another cool trick about this. And that is, while it's highly unrecommended and not even myself, I truly, I don't truly recommend doing this, but <clears throat> I think it'll be fun to kind of show you guys how if you do have to in an emergency or if this is just all you have, how to hang a axe head that's not properly sized for the handle <coughs> such as this one now of course obviously if the handle's too big you can always reduce material but you can't put more material back so first things first you want to get a drink of water most important when you have allergies and it sucks <coughs> the next thing you're going to want to do is basically take the handle of the axe and the head and you'll want to try and hold it as straight as possible obviously <clears throat> because these are both a handmade axe and a handmade handle uh, it's not going to be straight and perfect and so there's going to be one side that you guys can see there one side is a little bit more gap than the other but <clears throat> for the most part you want to try and keep it as straight as possible <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
a long little bit later, and with a whole bunch of time passed, I now have it properly done, as you guys can see here, uh, kind of how you do it. Now, of course, on the other side, there will be another dowel that looks like this. Now, once again, this isn't my favorite way of doing this, but if you do, just make sure that you remember that, as you guys can see here, hopefully, uh, how the dowel is hung. You do not want some chintzy kind of dowel job. So to save you from all the boring just-ness of uh, actually hanging an axe and doing it the way I did it, you guys can see there, um, I just did it all for you guys. Now, like I said, this was a pretty loose fit, so how deep I actually had this hung. The wood uh, bit here actually just went all the way down, so yeah, I'm not actually going to have to do too much trimming on that particular piece, but now I'm going to roll over grab a hacksaw real fast and uh, just trim this all for you guys so you guys can see there. These two uh, little dowel bits uh, went in very well. I just kind of hand carved it. I started off with like a, I think a half inch dowel and I just carved it down to make it all fit and make the handle and uh, head really firm like this. Once again, it's not a perfect fit. You guys can see there's still some gap, but I tried to eliminate as much gap as I possibly could, and I did a pretty good job. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. It still kind of sucks that I uh, did not have enough handle and I had to use dowels to kind of fill it in, but it works, and now I'm going to go chop it all off. So anyways guys, let's go over to that. Hey guys, so apologies for the fact that you guys can't really see me. What I'm just going to do is uh, you can do this in a vise even more easily, but I'm just gonna kind of go along the top here as straight as I can and just kind of trim all of this stuff off and hold it down at the same time. So these little dowels are really easy to cut. In fact, I think I've already cut through that one. Yep. The real trick is making sure that I get it right in on this hickory. He's getting scared, I think. And ta-da. A little rough around the edges. I'm gonna have to take some sandpaper over that. But I got it all cut off, except one final piece. Of course, as you guys can see here, I uh, some excess. So carefully, just gonna go along and wipe out this excess. And ta-da, got it cut and cut. Okay guys, so now you can inspect my job, see how good or bad I did. Like I said, I did the best I could here with what I had, and it's still pretty rock solid. So there you guys go. I did uh, nick up the finish just a little bit, uh -huh, right about here, but I wanted to make sure that I got a really flush cut on that. So anyways, now I'm gonna stake it with some metal stakes and then call her good. Hopefully, third time's the charm with the horse between the horse between the horse between just craziness around life here it's a little bit hard to film right now but anyways let's get this this stake staked in to this axe so that we can have a functional little tool so like I said I'm using a ball peen hammer and I'm going to put this little metal stake in at a 45 degree angle because that's generally the best rule with them and so I like to use a ball peen for this. Uh, it's kind of personal preference, but it's kind of up to whatever you like. But I personally like ball peen hammer because it's nice. Just make sure to use a metal hammer and not a mallet, like a rubber mallet, like we've been using the entire time. I've been using rubber mallets for everything else, but for this, you want to use steel because it's steel on steel contact. So, hopefully this doesn't shift around too much.
so that actually carried this wood wedge just a little bit deeper in. That's kind of what you want. Um, so there we sunk it in pretty well. And it didn't hold quite fully true to 45, but it did pretty good. So I'm not super worried about that. And it helped just hold everything a bit better together because like I said, we had to use these two dowels here. So overall, we'll see how this works, but I think I'm probably gonna end up rolling out with or what I think I'm probably gonna end up doing is actually building my own custom handle for it. But for now, this will probably do a pretty good job. And also for now, we're going to move over to part two in a later video of building a leather sheath for this puppy. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this quick little build to this. And like I said, kind of show you guys how you can make these work. Like I said, this is by far not my favorite way to go with having to use dowels, but I wanted to also show you guys how if you have to make things work, you can definitely make this work. Plus the 28 inch handle, I'm also curious to see how that will work for me or if I do just need to move up to a thicker handle or longer handle, sorry. So anyways, guys, that's all for this build. Sorry, it's taken actually quite a few hours to get this entire build done. But uh, yeah, that's all for now, guys. God bless and I'm out.